Am I the a-hole stories? Am I the a-hole for telling my daughter she caused her own problems? My wife and I are both 48 with two daughters, Liz, 30, and Ash, 24. I'm not sure where to start with this, so I'm just going to jump right into it. Liz used to date a young man named Pat. They were together for five years starting in college. In their fourth year together, Pat was accepted into medical school while Liz struggled. She worked as a dockside worker, and desperate for more income Liz, took up side jobs and took up a position in a local pizza shop to get management experience. From the outside looking in, Liz was working long hours while Pat was being crushed in school. They ended up getting engaged. However, Liz cheated on Pat and in the affair, got pregnant. Their relationship ended obviously. Ash went to the same school as Liz and graduated without any hiccups. She works in finance and she seems to be very happy in life and we couldn't be prouder of her. Last year, Ash approached myself and her mother about a guy we knew she had met. It was Pat, and they had met while they were both working. To make a long story short, they have been dating for over a year now and Ash seems to be very happy, while Pat still seems like a great guy. Liz has not taken this new development well at all, and has made issue out of issue with it. My wife and I both warned Ash this was going to be an obvious huge problem, but she said she was sorry for Liz, but she threw Pat away so she didn't care how she felt about it. Liz's life has been difficult to say the least. She has two children as a single parent, and her career has never really taken off. She doesn't do bad, however, I guess she had higher ambitions. Her life is certainly tougher than Ash's, and now that she's dating a doctor who she once was engaged to, she's on a downward spiral. Friday night, Liz came over and asked us to watch her children, but my wife and I weren't up to it. One is special needs and we just don't have the energy for it sometimes. She had a meltdown where she unloaded her emotions on us, and I told her that her problems are her own fault. She chose her degree, she chose her job, she chose to cheat, she chose to have kids and be a single mother. These were all her choices, and I for one am sick of hearing how bad her life is all the time. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Look, this might be an unpopular opinion, considering how this sub reacts to stories of people dating their friends slash siblings exes, but not the a-hole. Once you've cheated on someone, I think you lose the right to be upset about something like that. Liz already burned that bridge, and it's not as if Ash and Pat were having an affair while they were still together. I feel bad for Liz, but she ruined her own relationship, and these choices have consequences. That's how life works. Agreed. If Liz and Pat broke up, I would take the position that Ash shouldn't be invited to family functions that Liz is at. But when the relationship falls apart because you cheated, you lose the right to complain. I disagree with your judgment. Reread the post, OP talks a lot about Liz cheating and Ash getting together with Pat, but all that information is really irrelevant. I don't know why he even included it. The situation we are judging is what OP talks about in the last three paragraphs. Liz currently is dealing with a lot. She's a single mom, one of her kids is special needs, and she's not made of money. She's overwhelmed by all this and unloads all of her emotions about this onto her parent, looking for some support. They tell her that all of this is her fault. OP is the a-hole for saying that, even if it's true, not the time or place. I want to add that I agree with you that Liz is an a-hole for cheating years ago, I just think it has nothing to do with the current situation. Everyone sucks here. Liz for her choices, Ash for dating her sister's ex, just completely wrong, and you too for the dismissiveness and lack of empathy for your daughter. I'm getting a real Ash is the golden child vibe from this too. We don't have a golden child. When Ash started dating Pat, we cautioned her against it, and told her that we would not allow Liz to be uncomfortable at family functions. Not the a-hole, I can understand why she is upset about what is going on, but you are right, she did choose all of that. She cheated which lost her the person she was with. Her cheating led to her getting pregnant. It isn't easy having a child who has special needs, but it isn't up to you to bail her out. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for not sharing my inheritance with my sister after our dad died? I, 20 mil, am the youngest of four and the only boy. We have me, using fake names, Isaac, Honey, 21 female, Beth, 24 female, and Vicky, 26 female. When I was 17, I caught my mother having an affair, she tried talking me out of telling my dad, even going so far as to bribe me with things I want. I didn't listen and told him. They argue and my father files for divorce. 
During the divorce proceedings, it's revealed that the three of my sisters knew about the affair but never said anything. In fact, Vicky who's always been very spoilt, blackmailed my mom repeatedly to get expensive things. Anyway, my dad, hurt by this betrayal, cut them three out of his life for a while. He did reconnect with them, but he was hurt and no longer trusted them. During this time, my dad rewrote his will and basically left me everything, apart from $300 to be split between my sisters so they couldn't contest the will. I knew of this and didn't stop him. His money is choice. My dad hired a cutthroat lawyer, and my mom got nothing in the divorce and had to go live with Beth. My dad died due to COVID, and we buried him two weeks ago, and at the will reading, my sisters found out about the amended will and the reasons for it. My dad was a great investor, saver, and all in all very lucky when it came to money, so there was quite a fair amount being left to me on top of his house. My sisters of course are angry, and demand I split the money with them, along with my mother who I've not spoken to since the affair. They're calling me and my dad sexist and all sorts. My aunt said that maybe I should split to keep the peace, but I don't want to, as I feel that would disrespect my father's wishes, and he's already suffered enough disrespect. My sisters keep harping on at me, and Honey has revealed she's pregnant, so Dad would want something left for his first grandchild. I don't know what to do. Am I the a-hole for not splitting my inheritance with my sisters? I don't think so, but others are saying I am and that there is children too. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Your sisters made their choices. Your father made his. Reap what you sow and all that. Oh, and condolences on your loss. Thank you. Exactly as posted above. Your dad made his choice and you stuck by him and showed him you were loyal. Just out of curiosity, did your sister try to be in his life after the divorce or want any part of his life when he cut them out? If not, that shows how much they cared about their father, and now only want his money because they were left out. Not the a-hole. First, they manipulated mom into getting what they wanted, and now they are trying to do the same to you. When people show you who they are, believe them. Your dad was of sound mind when he wrote it, he even went so far as to prepare for any contest to his wishes. Trust your dad and don't give them a penny, not even the pregnant one. You didn't knock her up, not your problem. You open that door and she will show up wanting money for nursery, medical bills, until you are paying for her kid too. Do not open that door. Also, keep in mind, whatever you do for this baby, will become the minimum expectation for all future grandchildren of your father. Not the a-hole. I'd buy a nice baby gift and call it a day. Not the a-hole. If you do think your dad would have wanted something for his grandchild, then maybe set aside an account for that child that goes towards its college fund or something. Not something the mother can touch though. They are his children. His children that betrayed his trust, making it all the more painful for him. Definitely shouldn't be sharing any of it with your mom. True, that's something I could do for my niece slash nephew, if my sister isn't lying. The next story is titled Am I the a-hole for continuing to let my ex-wife's autistic brother live with me after our divorce? My, 42 male, ex-wife, 44 female, and I recently separated, we were together for 26 years, we met in high school, and during that time her parents became unable to care for her brother Brody, 34 male, who is autistic. Brody moved in with my wife and I 10 years ago, and while there was an adjustment period, he lived with us happily since then. My marriage's deterioration was completely unrelated to Brody, and was centered around my wife's emotional affair with a co-worker. When deciding what to do about Brody's living arrangements, I stated that Brody could live with me, but my wife overrode me and demanded Brody come with her. I said I didn't think this was fair, because Brody is verbal, he stated that his preferences were to stay at my house, his autism is fairly mild and he is capable of making his preferences known. My wife overrode him and took him with her when she moved out. However, since then, she has called me asking me to come get him because he was giving her such a hard time, letting him stay the night for a few days, then a week, and now it's been a few months since he spent the night with her at her apartment. I consider Brody to be my brother too, I've known him since he was 8 years old, I very much have a strong bond with him, and I'd be fine if he stayed living with me until I was old and grey. My ex and her family are very unhappy about this situation, but my argument is and continues to be, if they care about his happiness, they should listen to his opinions. He is an adult. Just because he is autism doesn't mean he doesn't have feelings and preferences. Am I the a-hole for letting my ex-brother-in-law stay against his family's wishes? Now for the comments. Not the a-hole. 
I actually think this is so sweet that you and Brody have each other. Yeah for real. Was not expecting such a heartwarming brothers before Ho's story here, they're both happier without her. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole OP, I'm glad you didn't just kick him to the curb because you and his sister split up. It takes a real decent person to see past blood, and to take somebody in even if they're not related. Good on you dude. Wish there were more like you. Not the a-hole. If he's verbal, he can say exactly what he wants or not. Plus, you're willing to help him, he knows you, and you have known him for the majority of his life, so you know his little quirks. He's lucky to have you. Thank you. He is very high functioning in the sense that he requires little help, he is self-sufficient in terms of hygiene. He is actually sometimes tells me I need to shower if I have a lazy Sunday without showering lol. The main thing he doesn't like is cooking, he hates the smells and sounds of food being cooked, so he usually stays in his room while I cook and then comes to eat dinner at the table. I know that in terms of autism, we are very lucky Brody is as high functioning as he is, he just has a lot of quirks and social difficulties, which would make living independently impossible. I understand. My oldest son is high functioning, as well but he has his issues. It makes it difficult for him to be around people who don't understand. That's just how he is. His big issues are clothing tags and not being able to stay out of strangers conversations. I totally get where you're coming from. That's why I said he's lucky to have you. Not many people would step up and do what you've done. You guys enjoy yourselves. And take a shower tomorrow. The last story is titled. Am I the a-hole for telling my dying sister that I won't be her daughter's guardian? I have a sister, Lydia, who is significantly older than me, and because the age difference, we've never been super close as far as siblings go. However, we are otherwise on good terms. Lydia got pregnant after a drunken one night stand, the dad was never in the picture. She's always been a good mum to her daughter, Ellie, now 8. My parents chipped in a bit when she fell on hard times, but otherwise, she did most of it on her own. Now here's the thing. Lydia was sadly diagnosed with cancer several years ago. She's been in and out of treatment, but her most recent prognosis is not good, and she's understandably trying to make arrangements for Ellie. I recently found out she wants me to be Ellie's guardian. Now here's the situation, I'm currently 26 and still living with our parents. The reason for this is I have autism, some would call it high functioning, but really with autism that's relative. I can only manage a part-time job as it is. If not for my parents' help, I might not be able to make ends meet. The other this is, I'm really, really sensitive to noise, and sadly kids make a lot of noise. I could not be a full-time carer, I'm unsure I'd even be able to take care of myself. So, I told her it could not possibly be me, that she needs to ask our parents. Now I told my parents this and they are willing to do it, and we could convert Lydia's old room to a kid's room again, etc. When I told Lydia this, she got angry, saying she needs it to be me not our parents, our parents are quite old, and she's scared they might not live until Ellie is an independent adult. She also knows I have a boyfriend, and she's sort of banking on us getting married, so she got it in her head we could be parents. I told her that I simply cannot take that responsibility, that I am already incredibly anxious about how I'll manage myself after our parents will be gone, let alone with a child. I told her that if she doesn't want our parents to do it, she needs to find another candidate herself. She started screaming at me, about how I am selfish and how our parents always helped me more and that I needed to give something back. I understand this is frustrating to her, but I feel my parents have been good to both of us, I just needed more help with my disability. I told her I understand this must be very painful for her, but I'm really not the person for this. She slammed the door on me. P.S. Of course I would help if Ellie came to live with us, I just do not want full slash legal responsibility. Also, I need to be able to isolate if she'd overstimulate me, am I the a-hole? As people asking for ages, they're 8, Ellie, 26, me, 40, sister, and 67 mom and 74, dad. Now for the comments. Not the a-hole. I get why your sister and understandably freaking out and upset right now, honestly, cannot even imagine what she's going through. But trying to force parenthood on someone who is unwilling and with a disability, isn't the right thing to do. If she gives custody to your parents, you will be there in the home, presumably doing what you can for this grieving child anyways. This is a horrible situation and I don't envy it. Maybe you all have cousins or someone else who is in a better position to take the child at this life stage. This, not the a-hole. 
I would also add that you know your abilities and limitations better than anyone OP therefore, your sister should really give some weight to your views on this. No a-holes here. Your sister is dying and desperate for someone to take care of her little girl. I can't imagine going through this. I couldn't imagine how she feels leaving her daughter alone in this world. I know it's not her responsibility, but that poor little girl. This is heartbreaking. Not the a-hole. You have the right to refuse the guardianship of anyone for any reason or no reason whatsoever. Your sister is in a tough place but that does not give her license to say you must do this for her. Your autism and living situation, would also be considered by the courts before granting this by the way. So, she might not get her wish even if you accepted. The answer you gave, no, is thought out, and valid. Stick to it and don't let it keep you up at night. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.